Science space, science space, come get your learning at the VSC Science space, come get your learning at the VSC Science space. Well, here we are back at the VLC Science Space. I'm Robin. I'm Peter. And today's lab shows the activity series of metal in action. The question I always get from students is, why are we using this? So let's take a look at a few examples of the activity series and single displacement reactions in a real world setting. Did you know that silver is found in x-ray films? X-rays have a finite lifespan, meaning they eventually need to be thrown out. But before this happens, silver must be recovered using the activity series of metals. The same process is used to recover silver in jewelry making. The reactants are included on the screen. Predict how to recover silver using magnesium and silver nitrate according to the activity series of metals. We also see this in the thermite process. Thermite welding is used to join railway tracks. The reactants are included on the screen and predict how to recover iron from aluminum and iron 3 oxide. Metals are pretty cool in that they will sacrifice themselves to save other metals. An example of this is found in iron rebar that is used to reinforce concrete pillars and bridges. Predict how zinc saves iron from salt water according to the activity series. Let's take a look at the materials needed for this lab. Test tubes held in place by a test tube rack. Pipettes for transferring solution from the test tubes to the well plate. Make sure both the pipettes and test tubes are clearly labeled so the proper solution goes into the right well. A wash bottle containing deionized water for making solutions. A beaker for making solutions from stock bottles. A graduated cylinder for making solutions. This was completed in a previous video. Well plates to observe each of the reactions. A scupula for removing metals such as. Copper, just add one piece per labeled well. Tin and iron, transfer a small amount using the scupula. This is what zinc looks like up close. We just need one piece per labeled well. Magnesium ribbon, break off a piece, sand it, and place a small piece in each labeled well. Copper 2 sulfate and magnesium sulfate. Note, copper 2 sulfate and dilute HCl were mixed into solution in a previous video. Iron 2 sulfate. Zinc sulfate. Tin 2 chloride. Gloves for safety. And of course, safety glasses, long hair tied back, and a lab coat. Chemical reaction look fors. In this lab, evidence of reactions will come in the form of a color change. Ooh. Ah. Or the liberation of gas. At times, you may have difficulty distinguishing between a reaction and simple gas coalescence. Dissolved atmospheric gases can cause the formation of bubbles on objects even if there isn't a chemical reaction taking place. Tiny microscopic bubbles can coalesce and slowly form larger bubbles, normally at spots where there are slight imperfections on the object. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. We've already placed one piece of metal into each of the wells. Now what we have to do is add the solution and watch the reactions. First of all, we're going to start with hydrochloric acid. Now, you don't have to add lots of this, just fill the well about halfway. Next, we'll add zinc.
Next up is copper. Now we'll add iron. Magnesium is next. And finally, tin. And now you just watch the reactions progress. <laughs> 